Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to cover exceptions and error handling in C++. So an exception is an error or problem that arises during the execution of a program. And sometimes this can cause the program to stop running and we can catch and handle exceptions so that our program can continue running even after we encounter the issue. So with error handling or exception handling, there are three keywords you need to know. There's try. So this is a block and a try block allows you to test code that can potentially throw errors. And within the try block, you can actually throw an error and these errors can be custom made or they can exist within functions or classes within the C++ library. So we can throw an exception when a problem is detected. And the last keyword you need to know is catch. So like the try block, the catch block allows you to run code, except this is only executed if we catch an exception from the try block. All right, now let's go over what exceptions are. So here I'm just going to add a print statement at the bottom. And if I run the program, you can see it says done. So for this example, let's say I have a vector of integers and these are room slots. And with each number, we indicate how many people are in the room. So let's say we are creating a booking system for rooms and we have five rooms and currently each room is empty. So one thing that would cause an error is if I were to try to access the index of a vector that is out of range. So in C++, you can access the value at an index in two ways. The first way would be to use the get operator. So I can do room slots and let's try to access index 100. Now the interesting thing here is if I were to run this, we're not going to get any errors. So let's save and run the program. And you can see we get the value zero. And the reason why we get this value is because we are accessing the memory outside of the vector. So this could be undefined behavior and it's not always going to give you zero. It could be something else. So in reality, this should have thrown an error, but I think because of how the low level array behaves, I think C++ was just trying to make the behavior consistent. So in C++, if you try to access the index outside the range of an array, C++ will not throw an error. So it's more about the responsibility of the programmer. So this does not throw an error, but what we can use is the at method. So it does the same thing as the get operator, except now if I run the program, you can see our program terminates. We get this error, this out of range exception, and our program terminates. So because of the exception that was thrown from this at method, we stop running our program and any code after this line, such as this one down here, will not be executed. So with the at method, we do throw errors, but with the get and set operators, we do not throw errors. So if I were to do room slots and let's say I assign index 20, the value 15, if I save and run the program, you can see we get done. So C++ will allow me to write at that memory address, even though it is not within the range of our vector. So instead of doing it this way, let's write a function that will handle the setter and throw an error if the index is out of range. So over here, let's define a function set room slot and let's pass in the vector. So vector int and we're going to pass by reference room slot and let's pass in two values, the index and num people. So here I'm going to do if index is greater than room slots dot size and actually let's make it greater or equal to so we have indices from zero to four. So the size is five. So if the index is greater or equal to five, then we will not update the vector. And let's also handle the edge case for less than zero. So or index is less than zero. So if the index is out of range, we can throw an exception. Basically, we can throw any value. It could be an integer or a string. So let's say I throw negative one. And if we don't trigger this if condition statement, that means we are within range for our index. And I can go ahead and assign room slots at index equal to num people. Now over here, let's call the function set room slot. And let's say I want to book index 20 for 15 people. 
So this is going to throw an error because we're going to end up in this if conditional statement because the index is out of range. So if I save and run the program, you can see our program terminates. So terminate called after throwing an instance of int, which is negative one. We throw an exception and we stop the program here. So this print statement never gets executed. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this function inside a try catch block. So I'm going to put this call inside try. And if I catch an exception, in this case, the exception is an int. So if I catch a number, I'm going to print out the error. So in C++, we have C out for printing and we have C error. And it's similar to C out, except this stream only takes in error messages and it is not buffered. So this means that unlike C out, C error does not store any error messages. Instead, it prints out the messages immediately. And just like C out, C error is part of the standard library. So if we were not using namespace std, you would have to do std colon colon C error. Okay, so let's log the error. So I'm just going to log n. And we can also log a message. So I can do C error set room slot. And so I'm just going to say the error was caught from this function. And let's say index out of range. All right, now let's save and run the program. And you can see we get an error, negative one, which is n, and we get set room slot index out of range. And if I were to do index two instead of 20, and I save and run the program, you can see we just get done. So if I call this function inside the try block and there is no error that is thrown, we don't catch anything. So these two lines do not get executed. And as I mentioned before, you can throw other types. So it doesn't have to be a number. I can throw a string. So let's just throw this error message. So I would do throw like so, and let's change this so that it is 20 again. So now index should be out of range. And if I save and run the program, you can see we get terminate called after throwing an instance of car const. So this is an array of characters instead of the string type. So if you remember, a string is essentially an array of characters, but the string class is not necessarily the same as a character array. So if you need a refresher on that, I have a video on strings and C strings, and I'll also link that in the video description. So what happened? Well, we weren't able to catch the error that was thrown over here because this catch block only catches integers and we're throwing a character array. So what I can do is I can add another catch block and I can catch const car array and let's call this error message. And here I can see error, error message. Okay, now if I save and run the program, and you can see we throw this character array string error message and we catch it and we print it out. And then the program continues. So index out of range is a classic error and we can have other errors that are relevant to our program. So for instance, we have room slots and let's say I have rooms at index one and two booked. So this is 20 and 25. So if these rooms are booked, I don't want the user to call set room slots and overwrite these values. So here, what I can do is I can add another check else if. So after the first check, we determine that the index is valid. So here I can just go ahead and do room slots at index. If it's not equal to zero, then I will throw another exception. So I can throw and in this case, I will write an error message so I can do set room slot. Room is already booked. Oops. So here I'm going to change this from 20 to two. So at room index two, we have 25. So if I save and run the program now, you can see we get an error. So we catch it and room is already booked and then we print done. All right, and let's get rid of this because we're not going to throw integers anymore and I'm going to delete this line. So another thing that we can do is we can throw exceptions back from other functions. So let's say for this block of code, instead of putting this check here, let's define another function called get room slot. And it takes in a vector int and let's make this const. And basically, this is going to print out how many people are in the current room. 
So let's paste that here. And in this case, I'm going to see out room index has room slots index. And then within set room slots, I'm going to call get room slot. So let's pass in room slots and index. And before we run the program, let's change this error message to get room slot. And over here, when we call set room slot, let's change this back to 20. Okay, so we're setting room slot 20 with 15 people. So let's save and run the program. And you can see we get get room slot index out of range. All right, so basically what happened was in our main function, we have our try block. And within the try block, we call set room slot. And within set room slot, we call get room slot. And in get room slot, we throw this error message. So because we're throwing this error message, we basically stop running the rest of this code. And we have the error here. So we stop running the code here. And instead, since we don't have a try catch block here, this function will just throw the error back. So it's going to throw the error message back to main. And here we catch the error message and print it out. Now within get room slot, we are checking to see if index is out of range. And as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, the vector has a built-in function that can already check for index out of range. So instead of accessing the index of the vector like this, we can use the at method. So here I can just do int num people is equal to room slots dot at index. So let's get rid of this and let's add a try catch block. So let's try. And here I can do catch. And in this case, we're going to throw an exception, but currently you don't know what the type is. So I'm just going to do triple dots. So this is the default catch error case. Basically, if we don't know the error type, it could be an integer, it can be a string. But in the case of this function, it's going to throw an exception type. So let's just catch anything for now. And let's print out the error message. So here I'm just going to do C error get room slot index out of range. And let's just move this inside here. Okay, so as a recap, we're going to try to get the value at the index for room slots and print it out. And if this fails, and if this gives us an error, we catch it. So with the triple dots, this means that we'll catch any error. So let's save and run the program. And you can see we get room slot index out of range and room is already booked. So what's happening here? So basically within our get room slot, we try to access the value at an index that is out of range and we throw an error and we catch it and it prints out this error message. So because we caught the error in this function, now within set room slot, we can continue executing the rest of the code. And this can be problematic because of this line here. Because earlier we had get room slot just throw the error back to set room slot, which would throw the error back to main. So instead of putting the try catch block here in get room slot, I will put the catch block in our main function. So let's get rid of this. And then within our main function, let's catch the exception. And in the case of this triple dot, because we're catching any exception, we won't know what the error message is. So let's just say exception caught. So since we're catching the exception in our main function, we don't know where this exception could be coming from. So let's save and run the program. And now you can see we get exception caught. So basically in our main function, we call set room slot, which calls get room slot. And we get an error thrown here, which gets thrown back to set room slot and we catch it here. And actually earlier I mentioned that it was an exception type. So we can do catch exception E. So if you ever seen exception E, the E stands for error. And sometimes you might see ERR. So either one could work. And here I'm just going to do C error E dot what. All right, now if I save and run the program, you can see we get exception and the exception is actually part of the standard library. So if we weren't using the namespace STD, you would have to do STD colon colon exception. So you would have to do STD colon colon exception like so. So this exception is not very specific. So let's comment these two blocks. And now if I save and run the program, 
You can see terminate called after throwing an instance of std colon colon out of range. So the exception is called out of range. So let's uncomment these two blocks. And here I will do catch out of range e. And we can just do c error e dot what. And now if I save and run the program, you can see we get more details about the out of range error. So we have m range check n, which is 20, so this is the index that we're trying to access, is greater than or equal to this dot size, which is 5. And if I were to put a negative number, like so, and I save and run the program, you can see we get this number. And the reason why we get this number is because, if you remember, in our video on vectors, size returns a size t value, which is an unsigned integer. And if I change this to 2, we can see the room is booked for index 2. So if I save and run the program, we catch this error, okay? So in this case, the error message is a character array, which will then trigger this catch block. So when you're listing out your try catch blocks, at the very bottom, you would have a generic catch block, which is defined by the triple dots. And then right above, you would have a general exception so this is basically a generic exception. And generally, all exceptions such as out of range would inherit or derive from this base class exception. So above this, we would have specific exceptions, and then we might want to have other error types. All right, so basically with try catch blocks, you want to order them from most specific to least specific. Because let's say if I were to switch this one with this one, and I change this to 20, so this is index out of range, we would like the catch block to catch the error here because it is a specific error. But if I were to save and run the program, you can see we just get standard exception. And here we even have C++ telling us that, warning, we should put this above this one because out of range would have caught the exception earlier. All right, so that's pretty much C++ exceptions and error handling. If you found this video helpful, make sure you give the video a like. And if you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. And if you want to stay up to date for more C++ videos like this one, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.